Well, I guess it does, as much as Santa Claus exists. <laughs> uh, I think asking the question is the same as answering it. You know, so yes, it's a thing. Nordic jazz. Yeah. I've been asked that question for 20 years now. Um, and I guess there is something about it. Um, because I think s strong artists will always reflect where they come from. I think there's a Nordic aesthetic and Nordic sound to a very broad variety of jazz music. So even though it doesn't really necessarily sound the same, it's still very Nordic in its uh, aesthetical choices. I would definitely say that uh, Nordic jazz exists. To me it's uh, really about uh, the environment and the landscape that is that we have in Scandinavia. Big uh, mountains, a lot of space. It's really beautiful there. So when you when you're there when when you compose music there it's uh, it will sound totally different than if you would do it in in uh, New York for example. I don't know. The lands oh, there is other nice landscapes too. <laughs> I don't know. We don't uh, go out in the in the sea or we take a boat and go to Iceland or something to create music. That's not the <laughs> I don't necessarily think that nature or, or that kind of living has uh, as much an impact on the sound of the music as the, uh, as the quality of life and the lifestyle in general. Honestly, I think a lot of that is marketing the idea of, of uh, the Nordic countries and, and that interaction with, with nature. And in reality, I think, or as, far as, as far as I know, most musicians I know, they live in cities. Uh, and, and, you know, they spend more time in 7-Eleven than they spend fishing. It mostly, it would be people from other parts of the world reflecting about it and say that, oh, I can see the ocean, I can see mountains, I can see uh, very little people, open spaces, uh, nature, etc., etc. Et and maybe that is true. I really enjoy music, which is has great melodies but also lyrical improvisations and you find that a lot in the Nordic countries that way of expressing music the lyrical idea I think you can find a, a certain sense of um, storytelling and uh, maybe a, a narrative element in, the, in music in Nordic jazz generally speaking it's probably more spacious uh, the Nordic jazz um, yeah, a bit more air in it. It's very spacious, uh, melodic, and, uh, you know, uh, often very beautiful and uh, not, not so expressive in a way that uh, a lot of other jazz can be, like, explosive in, in that way, I would say. Maybe that's the Nordic identity. It has some kind of space. Uh, it's less... Uh crazy than, for example, South European music. Northern cultures are less emotional than Southern cultures. That's a massive generalization, but I think it's fairly true. People in the Northern Hemisphere tend to, to keep their feelings a little bit more to themselves, um, unless they drink a lot. <laughs> yeah, the temperament is, is different also. I think so. We take our time, maybe more we are very slow <laughs> it has to do that you're not afraid to let the music uh maybe it's a little bit minimalistic uh in it and not to be afraid like the music could live by itself with only a few notes one thing that also created this is not the that the recordings of uh, on ecm records because of that uh, uh, reverb kind of uh, space sound, you know. I've grown up with ECM, the, the German record company, with uh, Garbarik and Terry Riptal and Keith Jarrett and all of these like big cannons, and uh, it shaped me uh, a lot. And maybe it shaped me into what some someone would call an, a Nordic uh, expression. But, but then again, at the same time, in, I mean, one of the, the greatest uh, proponents of the ECM sound and that Nordic sound in the 70s is Keith Jarrett. And he's very much 
American. Yeah, but if, if you if you listen to, for instance, Keith Jarrett's European quartet uh, versus Keith Jarrett's uh, American quartet, if you listen to the mus- musicians he used there, which was John Christensen, Jan Garbarek, they they had so much more air in the music, and it was uh, they used a lot of more space in the solos, and the melodies were more lyrical. So it was a pretty clear difference. If we are a little bit more free. I would say a little bit more European. The Americans are still, I think, more bound to the pro- to the tradition. I think so. We are, we we uh, we don't have to do that. I mean, the Americans they have it is like the the folk music. Yes, yeah, so it's a different. It's different for them. It's a very easy place to live. So even if if people are playing uh, s- straight ahead. Jazz, you don't you don't sense the same kind of struggle uh, with life in general that you will still today I think find with a lot of American musicians because that is so present in in American society if we take America as an example uh, and it's 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 easy to live in the Nordic countries and it's easy to work and and there has been uh, lots of opportunities for artists to really spend time on and working on their music and, and devoting time to that. So it often sounds, to me at least, a bit more calm than our American counterparts. Norway in particular put a lot of um, uh, efforts into promoting Nor- uh, n- uh, Norwegian jazz and uh, they funded it. They had their uh, like uh, export uh, jazz export office that really uh, created opportunities for Norwegian jazz musicians to go play abroad and uh, through ECM um, this music just became uh, really uh, widely known. When you hear somebody play like Jan Garbrek, you know, it, it's all too easy to say, oh yeah, that's uh, you know, the Nordic thing or actually the Fjordic thing, yeah. not come to think of it, you know, and, and just, you know, as we do in Holland, then we just put it in a box, oh, it, this guy plays, li- plays like that, so we know it. So, yeah, but... It can be harmful, but so can any other uh, uh, genre name. You know, it's it, it's best to just listen to all the music just at, uh, as for what it is. There's such a diversity, as I said, in Nordic music, even in just in Nordic jazz. And, and, and if people hear uh, kind of a Nordic thing in all that diverse music, that's... That's totally okay for me because there, then there's freedom. You know, you can do what you want, and still, people will hear some kind of Nordic stuff in it. It's okay. I'm really, really inspired by being in the mountains. So I, I'm such a cliche. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, it's it's uh, only a positive thing. I, I mean, whatever makes people label things and and make them remember it better or put them. It's it's such a human thing to do to to specify things, and then if that's a, a positive label I mean playing Nordic jazz that's I, I'd, I'd love to have that label <laughs> so welcome I mean we are all different and we want to do it's good and now you see the young generation now they are also back very much into the American jazz language which is uh, the basic for, for everybody but so you cannot maybe talk any longer so much about that Nordic. It's a mixture. I think Nordic jazz today is is mixing even more different musical styles and elements in its music, you know. We still want to, to have that uh, link to the Nordic music, but we also would like to to have uh, the jazz music in, in another track, another path, you know, in, into music and uh, uh, trying to mix that and blend that together to create something uh, something else. This kind of what we now call the Nordic, it, it, it happened then, I mean, it's something happened. But now I don't, I think people play all kinds of stuff. Or don't you think? <laughs>